Happy Friday, Friday everyone. everyone. I'm Nuria. And I'm Frank. And welcome to another episode of ITT, ITT Podcast. Podcast which stands for In This Together Podcast. Our podcast is our honest take on relationships, love and marriage with the aim of sharing our views and experiences for you to take from it whatever you need. So whether you're single, dating, in a relationship or happily married, there is something in it for you. Hi everyone. Today's episode is called The Importance of Vulnerability and we'll be talking about what it is, why it matters in a relationship, is it ever too much and how we approach vulnerability in our relationship. We're also going to answer the dilemma we read out last week so listen out for that. So vulnerability was a topic that was always on our list to cover in season one, but due to the dilemma email from last week, we decided to bring it forward just to answer our listeners' questions while covering the topic in a lot more detail. So because we were going to talk about it anyway, we figured we can just weave in the dilemma, bring it forward, and then we can talk about it the way we were always going to talk about it. We think this is a really important topic to touch on because it can really make or break a relationship from the outset. That's right. It's something where if you don't come into a relationship with vulnerability from the beginning, when you want to become more serious with that person or make a serious commitment, like marriage, for example, you can find yourself having to almost start from the beginning, like almost like getting to know each other and everything else. Yeah. So it's important as always for us to define vulnerability. A quick Google search of the meaning of vulnerability will define the word as a noun, which refers to the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. Dictionary.com uses the phrase openness to attack or harm and goes on to give it a secondary definition of the willingness to show emotion or to allow one's weaknesses to be seen or known willingness to risk being emotionally hurt so from the definition you can see that vulnerability is a state that you're in in a relationship it's a state that you can choose to be in or a state you can choose to avoid being in it's key to a relationship because it will foster the openness the honesty the connection that you need in a relationship. So if you're choosing to not be vulnerable in a relationship and you're choosing to kind of hold back, then you risk the openness, the honesty, that connection not being there because you're not really being authentic. You're not bringing your true self into the relationship. Why do you think it's important for us to be discussing it in this podcast? Yeah, I think it's important for us to discuss in this podcast for our listeners. It's something that we should all be aware of, um, something that we should all address. Mm. A lot of people will not understand the meaning of it. I thought I understood the meaning of it till about five minutes ago, but clearly not. <laughs> now I, well, I did understand what the meaning was, but reading that, that definition has, has improved my understanding of it. And I think, mm. um, I think it's really important. It could make or break a relationship and it could destroy a marriage as well Mm, yeah i agree for me as well i find it most interesting that most people if you ask them whether they want true love in their life everybody will kind of say yes like they definitely want true love but many of these people don't really understand what it takes to have true love for true love to exist i really believe you need true vulnerability vulnerability is the strongest bridge to a connection Mm -hmm. with each other in a relationship So you can't really have true love if you're not even truly willing to be vulnerable. You're not willing to risk being hurt. And because of that, you're kind of staying closed off. So it's just interesting to me that a lot of people talk about true love and they just don't really link vulnerability Mm. with that true Mm. love Mm. and the necessity for it to exist in order for true love to to actually flourish. It doesn't always come naturally to a lot of people. No, I don't think it does. Uh, From a man's perspective, it's... It's not in our nature to talk about being vulnerable. Hmm. Well, that's a good place to segue to. What has always been your understanding of vulnerability and what does it mean to you when you hear someone saying, oh, you know, 
be more vulnerable or you're not being vulnerable enough or she was being quite vulnerable what do yeah, you my, my, like? my understanding of vulnerability is being open mm. basically letting your guard down mm. being your true self um not caring what anyone thinks mm. committing yourself to something without holding back mm -hmm. it's about being open to anything yeah and not being closed off it's about letting people in what does vulnerability mean to you Okay, so to me, vulnerability is about being authentically yourself. So it's about letting your guard down. It's about approaching things from a natural place, not being kind of contrived, not overthinking how you feel, just being yourself and being open about it and saying what you think. That way that that person can actually get to know you and they can understand you and meet you at that kind of human level so um yeah i think that's what it is for me i think there's a difference between vulnerability and weakness a lot of the time people associate vulnerability with weakness because like the definition says you're leaving yourself open to attack you're there's a possibility of being hurt you're risking being hurt and i think because of that sometimes people see it as a weakness and they don't want to be vulnerable but I think it's actually the opposite of weakness. I think it's strength because to actually allow yourself to be open to being hurt, you have to actually be quite a strong person to be able to endure hurt if that were to, to occur. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a strength in you that you need when you're vulnerable because you you recognize the reality of the situation is that the, that person might not actually be someone that takes that on board and protects it they might actually hurt you or they might use it against you so, um, so you're saying that for example in a relationship it's about yeah. the person being open yeah okay. yeah definitely about being open i think for me it's um being trusting the other yeah. person trusting them that they would use their judgment mm. to be able to treat you fairly yeah i would say yeah i agree with that i think there's also a link between vulnerability and empathy you have to be an empathetic person to see your partner being vulnerable and know that your partner is being open and for you to approach it with yeah. empathy yeah you need empathy you need compassion in order for vulnerability to work effectively in a relationship i also think it's a skill that you have to kind of harness I don't think that being vulnerable is something like we said that comes easy. I think you kind of have to initially want to be vulnerable. You need to kind of practice being aware and acknowledging your emotional state mm. rather than deflecting, avoiding or denying how you feel. Um, I think because people see it as weakness, like you're just saying, sometimes people will try not to really be honest with themselves and they'll just be deflecting in situations where they'll try and avoid difficult conversations mm. and to yeah. me that's like it's quite immature because you're not you're not acknowledging the truth of the situation mm. which means that you can't really address any situation effectively yeah so it's it shows a level of maturity yeah yeah it does it does because obviously being vulnerable means accepting you can't control what will happen yeah um but you'll still act or speak in a way that's authentic to you. So you can still be yourself, but yeah. you know, you obviously you don't have control over it. Yeah. So that's what it means to us. Why is vulnerability important in a relationship? Why is it necessary? Yeah, it's necessary because it allows you to be yourself. It allows both parties to be themselves, which will create a healthy environment for the relationship. Yeah, uh, I believe the best way to kick off a relationship is is to start off by being very open and, and being very honest about what you both want and mm. what, what you're both expecting. So, and I think yeah, that we does, talk about that yeah, a lot, a lot, well. a lot. Yeah, so it makes you vulnerable by stating your expectance or you know what you expect from the other person because mm. they may not fit that mold. That yeah. mold, and also they can they know how to hurt you if they know what your boundaries and exactly, expectations are. Exactly, because exactly. they know what they. Can can do that will you'll be disappointed or that you will not be happy with so it's very easy for them to use that against you but it's, like we said before it makes you closer as a couple yeah, as a couple yeah. and 
it fosters kind of intimacy and trust like you mentioned before mm. as well so without it the relationship is just going to be really yeah. fake very superficial and i'm sure everyone has seen that couple where there's no natural, there's connection. natural connection i think some yeah. people talk about chemistry yeah and it's like a lot of that is linked to vulnerability. How vulnerable are they around each other? Does it seem like they're just acting, like they're just performing? Most of the time you can feel a vibe around a couple, whether or not it feels authentic. Mm. When you're vulnerable in a relationship, you're allowing that other person to know the real you. And so when they kind of know the real you, they're more likely to understand you and to want to protect you if they really do love mm. you. Um, and so I think there's something there about it reducing resentment because you could be in a state where you're just not happy with each other. But if you're vulnerable and you really express how you're feeling yeah. or why you're feeling yeah. that way, the other person can then reduce a certain kind of animosity towards you because they're starting mm. to understand mm. why mm. you're behaving the way you're behaving. Yeah. So that's definitely part of the benefits of vulnerability in a relationship it will help you to not be as resentful as disconnected you know reduce animosity and things like mm. that in a relationship from a, a different angle i believe it's also a way of finding out if that person actually loves you mm. yeah absolutely. i think you know we say practice being vulnerable in a relationship mm -hmm. you being vulnerable will actually bring out the real person yeah and how they respond to that vulnerability. Exactly. If they take advantage of that, then you can clearly see that, oh, this person may not be the right person for me because obviously I'm being vulnerable, I'm being mm. open about myself, but and yet this is how they are treating me. Yeah, this so, is how they're responding. Yeah, responding, so yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah. It can show that they're really immature. Yeah, You know. very. Or they don't care about you, like you're saying. You know, there's two ways to look at it for sure because it definitely helped you to like weed, weed that, that out. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's definitely Early necessary in a, yeah. in a relationship. Yeah. And I guess um, if we're thinking about our own relationship, mm -hmm. right? Would you say we had we were always vulnerable with each other from the beginning? I think maybe not in the start. Yeah. I think it took a while. I wouldn't say it. It took years. I say it took a while. I think once we got to How know long? each other, I probably say <laughs> Mom. months, a couple of months. I probably would say about nine, ten months. Um, I think once we got to know each other really well, we got to spend more time with each other, and I think we we naturally let our guards down. Mm. Yeah. I think there's definitely something there about men and the length of time it probably takes them to be vulnerable, which is kind of it's kind of touches on the question that our listener asked, you know. I think they mentioned the guy being seeming to be a bit more guarded. Yeah. We'll talk specifically about the question later, but I do think that in our relationship I was vulnerable from the beginning. Yeah. I think one of the things that I said in the beginning was I, I think I asked you like what am i to you yes yes what are you to me yeah uh, and that was that was within weeks i think like week no, no I, yeah you did ask me that um but I, th I think from a guy's point of view we may not let our guard down because we're not sure about that relationship mm. it could be because we may have other options there may be other girls that we're talking to <laughs> i'm just I'm you just, might as well just I'm confess just putting it out there no 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 there might be other you might be talking to you know two or three other girls yeah girls, definitely and you're not sure you're currently trying to pick up that one that you want to be with so you can't let your guard down on every single one of them mm, that's a good point so that could be the situation yeah just for the record what did you say when i asked you like what am i to you because I think that's kind of key, right? Don't, <laughs> why is he smiling? He's looking at me funny. I'm being serious because that's part, that's quite key because yeah. it kind of goes a bit into next week's episode about setting boundaries and expectations. But yeah. that was quite a key moment for me yeah. because I think it was a, it was a was key moment in the relationship because, yeah, because you, by asking that question, you literally put your guard down mm. and you put your chip on the table. To say, yeah, I put my chips on the table. Yeah. <laughs> like, put it on the like it was poker. <laughs> yeah, well, literally, yeah. that's what you did. You put it on the table, like, what am I to you? Yeah. And I was, and like, I, I yeah. was risking yeah. being Be saying that or... you're nobody to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but at the same time, it was also a form of boundary setting. Yes. Because yeah. it was very early in our relationship, I would say, I probably 
I think it was within the first month. I do think I don't so. Think so. I, think, you I think, think it's within. I think it was probably two or three months. I don't think it was. A... We were both at uni, and we were both at separate unis. And I didn't want to kind of make a lot of effort traveling back and forth to see each other if I if it wasn't serious. So I know that. From the beginning, I was only going to really be journeying across <laughs> across the country, even though it wasn't that far. But I wasn't going to be making crazy journeys to someone who I was just dating. And plus, I was at uni, so I was studying. I had, yeah, yeah. you know, I had yeah. stuff to do school wise. Yeah. So you wanted to just establish who I was, who you was to me. And yeah. so that's why I say yeah. it was within the first month okay. of us. Okay. Maybe, maybe the maybe first it was. few the first few weeks we were just talking, yeah. but. Once we actually started seeing each other, and maybe it was the first two months, maybe you're right. But when I actually went to to visit you mm -hmm. at your uni, mm. that the first time I went to visit you is when I asked you because yeah. I remember thinking, yeah, because I'm not because coming we had, back because if we I'm had, not we his had, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, because we had we had gotten to know each other really well. Yeah, like, talking we talked to each a other, lot. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot. A lot. Um, so I, I so it felt like when you saw me at uni, uh, it was a case of well this is going well it feels like we do like each other yeah. so what am i to you yeah which yeah. it was a bit of a surprise to me it was, uh, it was yeah it was it was but and i liked it and i liked i liked the fact that you put it out there mm. and and i knew that was a vulnerable moment for you mm. yeah but I, obviously I, did, I didn't know you knew that i knew that i knew that um but obviously my my response was not to cushion your vulnerability yeah it, was it just, wasn't to appease it, it was a appease yeah. it. it was just a straightforward like and by the way the answer was you're my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> just to put it out there <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but yeah it was a case of like i guess i anticipated that question mm. before we saw each other i anticipate that you that was going to come from you in terms of who are you to me because girls are more they're more open they're more vulnerable they're more they will say something like the guys will not come forward and and mm. give that information <laughs> i'm just being honest give they will not or ask, oh, them. ask that yeah like but you know so what are we are you my girlfriend then it doesn't have to be like that it doesn't have to be beef it could just be straight up like yeah, you know yeah. like you what's going on yeah. but this is why we're doing this podcast because that's this is what we want to be talking about like you know it's important in a relationship especially early on i mean that segues into the next question we were going to ask how early should you show vulnerability in a relationship hmm. I think I think from the beginning yeah, I, I and agree just like yeah. our example yeah. you know within within the first couple of months I was asking Frank that mm. and I think it was within the first month but it was definitely within the first two months because I knew that that would show his level of maturity if he was on on some yeah well I'm still dating I'm still looking around I'm gonna see how I feel mm. then I know where I stand yeah. and I yeah. know that maybe this guy is not as serious about me as I am about him and so I don't have to invest as much time as much energy yeah so the earlier the better in that relationship yeah, yeah the earlier the better because yeah, once sure. once established it fosters the trust that mm. you need in the relationship you know because obviously once you get past that phase it's a case of you can then be even more open with each other. Yeah. Because you know where, you both know where you stand. Exactly. You know? And it's part of the plan that we mm, were talking about yeah. last week yeah. about roles in a relationship. Yeah. You need a plan in order to know where you're going exactly. in a relationship. So the, yeah. the first step of the plan is to establish who am I to you? Who yeah. are you to me? Yeah. From there, then you can be like, you okay, if I'm it. your girlfriend or you're my boyfriend or whatever we are like that, you yeah. can build from there to yeah. then which, define. Which, which then leads to the boundaries and whatnot. Yeah. It, all, it's, it's all, it all fits in. It's all connected. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> boundaries are next. We need to <laughs> stay tuned. But yeah, so it's all kind of, I mean, we planned it, but I don't think we planned it this. <laughs> we were not this genius about it, but I guess, yeah, it's true. The plan is there. You've, you've kind of define who you are to each other. Yeah. From there, you can understand what roles you need to play to each other. And you can be vulnerable because if mm. that's your girlfriend, you should be able to be vulnerable. Be. Yeah, yeah. And that's the same thing in marriage. You know, I think we can't sleep on the fact that a lot of people are probably married right now and they haven't actually established vulnerability mm. within that relationship. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people front and pretend to keep their feelings yeah, intact, to keep yeah. their heart protected. Yeah, almost. they probably, I'm, I'm sure there are some partners that don't know the deepest darkest it doesn't have to be the deepest darkest <laughs> this, this thing harry potter and the chamber of secret i mean 
It, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I'm sure there's, there's partners yeah. that don't they're just, share. Yeah, they don't with share each other. because they know that because they know that the other partner is will not be receptive, mm. or, or, or have the empathy, the, or have the empathy, or maybe they're just not sure yeah. how their partner how they will, par- receive will receive it. it yeah. Which is why you need to do it from early on because yeah. then you know for certain how they receive that. Um, and it's like Frank was saying earlier as well. You need to do it early on because you could use it as a tool to weed out the people that you're not compatible yeah, with. Definitely. You don't want an immature man that can't take the fact that you or like an immature woman. I'm speaking or, as a okay, woman. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Jeez. Sorry, sorry. Jeez sorry. Louise. Frank is he's got his cape, he's got his armor ready to defend anything about men. Like I'm I speak as a woman okay. from a woman's perspective. I know, I know. You get? My bad. So I'm always gonna say to another woman yes you don't want an immature man Mm. who's not going to accept the fact that you have fallen for them or you like them that's true and and that's not to say that just because you say you like someone they need to say they like you too otherwise they're immature no but they can receive that vulnerability and say i really appreciate you telling me Mm. i'm really falling for you as well or I'm not there yet, but I really like you and I really Mm. want you to give me the chance Mm. to kind of get Mm. to know you more because I do think I can get there. Um, Yeah, it gets the conversation started. Yeah, Yeah. it's not always going to be at the exact same time. Yeah, Yeah. I don't think it tends to be at the exact same time. I think, yeah. Unless you're one of those love at first sight people. Does that that really exist? Yeah, I think that's a myth. (laughs) That's another that's another topic that's another topic for another, topic, another podcast, but yeah i think it's a good way to kick off the conversation mm. so i guess with us that was me being vulnerable but then when would you say you actually became vulnerable in the relationship so when did you show your vulnerability when did you really let your guard down um and i want to hear this <laughs> when did i let my guard is, is that the one i told you that i love you was it yeah when was that? When did you? I, th- I think that was what a couple of months after we a had couple established. Couple of months, two months. Nah, you did not tell me you loved me after two months. It was a couple of months. It was probably, Sir, not, not two months. Probably no, maybe about six, seven months. This it is what happens. It wasn't, when you've been years, it wasn't years. Together for ninety years. Was it years down the? Was it years down the? It wasn't <laughs> years. Year. Exactly. It, wasn't year. it was a couple of months down the line. A it was probably about was six. Like two. Okay. Well, not a couple. I, I'll say it's a, it was about several months. It was down several the months. Line. Several months down the line, I would say. Um, when I said I love you. If we started dating in October, mm-hmm. which month do you recall it being? As I, I would probably say, I'll probably say in, was it not like Valentine? Was it not February? Valentine? Yeah, this is what I'm saying to you. I said yeah, it's a couple of months. It was, actually. it was a couple of months. I know. I know. Yeah, that's about four I months. said it, so I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's when, that's that was yeah, my, I think it was my vulnerable Valentine, moment though. because... um. I don't think I'd ever said that to a, a girl before. So you yeah. were literally the only woman I'd said that to, to the only girl I said that wow, to. Wow, yeah. yeah. That's so true. that was vulnerable for me. You could have said, well, I don't love you too. <laughs> or bugger off. Um, no, bugger or, or not, Or not respond. It would be like, <laughs> right. Right. No, no, no. Yeah. I think you're right. But I think you were not that, you weren't at that much risk because I think I had already told you I loved you by then. You didn't tell me you loved me first. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's, I don't it's, think. I don't. I don't it's I don't such have... a long time ago. Yeah, you start forgetting things. Um, I don't have a strong recollection, but I'm pretty. No, sure. no, I think you said it first. I think. But then, what so, did you say in response? Because I don't think when I said it that you said, "Okay, thanks." I don't think it was like that. Yeah. So but but even happened? if I said I love you back, that was like a response, isn't it? It's just like. <laughs> well, I guess when I <laughs> when I said it on that. Yeah, yeah, on your own on accord. On my own accord, like, you know, I, yeah. really, I really love you. Yeah. That's when it kind of like... I wish you had told me, <laughs> like, okay, so this is the real one, so that I could have known then. Because yeah. I think you did you did respond with, like, oh, I love you too. Yeah, but... And I was like, it's a, sure. No, no, but, but the thing is, but, no, but, no, but I remember when I said that, you said to me, how do you know? How do you know you? How do you know you like that? It's real love. I was like, oh, oh god. Oh my god, yeah. I, I had to explain. Rare, 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 rare. Do you remember? What yeah, you said? like you know, it's the feeling you get. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Did, I yeah. Think, yeah. So I wasn't about to let him just get away with a. Yeah, I really but love but you. but but I must say, from that point, I I think I was already feeling vulnerable. Yeah. Even just responding to that. Um, mm. uh, yeah, that so I love you. That, yeah. Yeah, my yeah, I love you. Yeah. With. Because it, it allowed me to 
to assess myself and assess how I felt about you. Mm. Not just going through the, the daily motion of just, you know, being boyfriend and girlfriend, but it actually allowed me to stop and think, mm. how do I actually feel about this girl? What, me saying what, it? Yeah, you saying it to me and, and how I felt about it. So mm. it, yeah, that's why when you ask me, how do I know is blah, blah, blah. So I to, when I explained myself, it felt right that that was how, how, how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Oh, that's sweet, by the way. Yeah. To reli- to kind of revisit that time mm-hmm. because it's been so long. It has been. It's, it's been a yeah. lot. That was like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. um, yeah, so the best... So, bas- so basically, how early should you show vulnerability in a relationship? As early as possible. Yeah. Get it out of the way. Yeah, I but, would say. I, but let's be real. You, you know, let's say you meet someone... Not just you meet someone one, like week one and be like... Well, I miss you. I love you. No, no, no. Don't do that. Like, get to know them. You know that. Do that whole process of telephone conversation, going on a date. But once that feeling, once you start building that feeling, yeah, express it. Yeah. And this goes for both male and female. Express it. Yeah. Like, straight away. Even if it is really in like the second day of talking to them, because some people have like that really long yeah. initial conversation. Yeah. I think we had that. We spoke on the phone hours and hours and hours the Tell first me about time it. Yeah. and you don't even like talking on the phone <laughs> yeah but you enjoyed that conversation our initial conversation is that what i said to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did no, 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 i did i did enjoy it was good it, it felt like it was five minutes yeah yeah if, it just yeah. felt natural it felt natural but yeah i didn't love you at that point but i really liked you and mm. i think you were very open about that as well like yeah i really like you like yeah. we were very honest with each other mm. Um, so I guess it's like, yeah, from the beginning, say what you feel. It's like that yeah. game catchphrase. Say yeah, what you see. Say what you see. I, no, I agree. I agree. Say what you feel. <laughs> say it's what true. you feel. Like... And, and, as, and especially to, to guys out there, be more expressive. Mm. Be more expressive. Don't wait for the, for the girl to say it. You say it first. Surprise her, shock her, shock her. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You're a mad man. No, no, because when it comes from a guy, I'm sure it hits differently, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah exactly. So if, you, if you're feeling like that, say it. Yeah. So what do you think is the best way to approach vulnerability in a relationship or a marriage? And then we can kind of use this to talk about how we approach vulnerability in a relationship, in our marriage. We kind of noted some stuff down. Mm. The first one was start from the beginning. You know, we've already kind of just touched on that. Start from the beginning, be your true self from the beginning. That way you don't have to, six six months down the line, have to try and reintroduce yourself Mm. like Jay-Z. Allow me to reintroduce (laughs) myself. (laughs) Because by that time, the person might have fallen for the person you've been pretending to be. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Start from the beginning. Um, The second one was something that I'm quite strong on which is no games you know this this is such a common thing in our society and it's almost kind of fed to us Mm, throughout society mm. we seem to want to approach relationships through some sort of rule book type game the book that comes to mind is the book that i read as well when i was like a early adult you know late teens probably like 19 20 or something like that which was steve harvey's book act like a lady think like a man i'm not a big steve harvey fan i, I just need to say that for the record um but that book i remember when it came out there's movies even there's a movie mm-hmm. about it as well right um i do like that movie though and that book is so specific um about how to approach a relationship and it's really helpful Mm. in terms of some of the tips in it but sometimes people take that kind of information and they use it as some sort of unnatural rule book Mm. for how to actually Mm. behave in the relationship and they put their feelings and their emotions aside yeah i don't like that and so I think you need to take certain things like those kind of books and stuff like that. And even things that we might say, you have to take that stuff with a grain of salt. Like you have to realize that what trumps all of this is authenticity yeah, and, and doing what comes naturally and being real. So don't play games. Don't do the whole, oh, we've been on a date. I had a really great time, but I'm not going to call him for two days because I don't want to look desperate. Please don't do that. Because if you had a really good time and you made a connection, 
he was probably expecting you to be very real and open and be like, oh my gosh, I had a really great time mm. and speak to him the next day. And when you do the two day thing, you're probably showing him a you're either playing games and immature or he then starts to doubt the signals that he was receiving yeah. during the day. Yeah. And so he, he feels yeah. like he can't trust you. And like I'm saying, I'm talking from a female perspective, but mm -hmm. this is the same thing for men. For men, I agree. You I know, agree. if I you agree. start playing games because yeah. you don't want to, you want to not look too desperate. You you're blowing hot and cold. Yeah. She now doesn't know how to to be around you. You yeah. know. Yeah. What's the next one on our list of the way to approach vulnerability? Um, start slow. Um, mm. vulnerability doesn't mean being a blabbermouth. Mm. Yeah. So start slow. Don't. Yeah, they don't need to know they everything. Don't need to know everything. Just you know, I really like you. Yeah. Start um, slow. Start slow. Yeah. Like, and also just like about your intimate things about yourself, mm. things that you hold dear to yourself when they you're trying to get to know you, when they're trying to get to know you. Give them something that means something to you, but it's not too deep about you. You know, you don't have to tell them your deepest, darkest secrets, like Frank said, right from the outset. Start mm. small, which is the next bit. Start slow <laughs> mm. and also start small because you want to first see if you can trust them with with certain intimate information about yeah. you. So start small, start slow, because you want to make sure that that person is actually going to take that information properly. Yeah, but, but, but we're saying all of this. So if you're in a relationship, listening to that, Mm. That sounds all good. But what about if you're in a marriage? It's, so, a, it's, it's still the same approach. I guess it's it's a case of, you know, be open and honest with your with your husband and wife. Create a space where both you can open up to each other. You can yeah. both discuss whatever is in whatever is on your mind. Yeah. I think also like they do the same thing does apply because if you're in a marriage and you haven't been vulnerable with each other, you still need to take these steps. Mm. You might not be able to start from the beginning because yeah. you're already married, but yeah. start small. Start small. Start slow. Yeah. Don't, you you know, because you're only just now opening up. So start with yeah. something that's be not that big a deal that you can share with them. See how they take that, how they receive that. Mm. Um, can you trust them to protect that information? And remember, your partner, whether you're in a marriage or relationship, is still human. And they will make mistakes. And that could sometimes include using that vulnerable information yeah. Yeah. against you yeah. um if they do something like that tell them that they've done that tell them that it's hurt you mm. or that you're upset about that and use that opportunity to set a boundary and be like you know please don't do that again because it makes me feel like i can't be honest with you yeah. or you know and also um, be, be patient with each other yeah because talking about the vulnerability it, mm. it takes time yeah it takes time so i think a lot of patience is needed yeah with each other yeah. Exactly. Just because you're comfortable to start saying certain things at a certain point doesn't mean they are. Yeah, Some people are not as expressive as others. Yeah. Some people have had things happen in their life that's made them a lot more guarded. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So you definitely point. need to be patient for sure. I think maturity level also matters. You know, mm. if you are getting the vibe that this guy you're dating yeah. or this man you're married to, unfortunately, if it went that far, is immature mm. then that should that's a red flag you know that's if they're being immature and you feel like every time you're vulnerable they crack jokes about how weak you are mm. or um they use it against you all the time even mm. though you've told them not to if they don't cherish the fact that you're being vulnerable with them and you're you're yeah. trusting them yeah. that then a big issue yeah, yeah. that's an issue. Big issue you have to think about your vulnerability as being something that someone earns Mm. and something that not everyone deserves. So it might sound contradictory to what we just said earlier, but it's not. You know, from the beginning, be vulnerable. If you feel like this is someone that is a, a nice person that you can kind of get on with, start with something small, be vulnerable. And if they receive that well, be more vulnerable. Open up a lot more, a lot more, and just and do the, do it that yeah, that way got naturally. The more, the more they're, re they're receptive to what you're giving, yeah. the, the more you can... Yeah. And if you feel like they don't deserve it or they're not really responding in the right way, stop. Yeah. You can pull back. It's fine because you do have to protect yourself. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's not for everybody. Yeah. I um, agree. But then that should be a red flag. It doesn't mean stop and stay in the relationship without mm. being vulnerable. Mm. I that agree. could be I agree. that could be a sign to reevaluate the relationship. relationship. Yeah. Like should yeah. you even be with this person? Yeah. 
that's why it's quite important to establish that from the beginning exactly so that yeah. you're not too far, far gone, gone yeah by the time you're making that decision yeah so what would you say in this list is how we approach vulnerability in our relationship mm, i think i think we started slow yeah I think we started slow. Um, we started small. Yeah. Um, from that question, in terms of who so, are you to me? Some people say that question is big. It's big. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it, you know you could it does feel big. It is big, but in a, in another way, it was important to establish that from the beginning. We did start off small. We did start off from um, slow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because we, I, I felt like we took things easy. Yeah. And then oh, one that we missed about the way we approach it and, and the approach to it is um, listening, listening to yourself, yourself. and listening to your partner, mm. which is kind of linked to mm. being patient. Yeah. You know, make time to listen to each other, whether this is like scheduled time or it's just like when you're just sitting down, chilling, and you're mm. talking. Mm. Think about how well you're listening to your Practice partner. Practice listening. Yeah. Because that's something we all struggle with sometimes. Mm. You might be there listening to them but are you actually listening to what they're saying exactly yeah and then give yourself that same courtesy listen mm. to yourself you know be open and honest with yourself if you feel a certain way you feel that way for a reason so be open with that and accept that that's how you feel and challenge that you mm. know explore that yeah. within yourself so that you really understand yourself because it's only through really understanding yourself that you can actually tell someone else mm. about yourself and yeah. help them to yeah. understand you. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So can you ever be too vulnerable in a relationship? Yes, I think you can, especially if the other person hasn't done enough to deserve it. Mm. Yeah, I think you have to be cautious. Um, you, can, you can often tell from the beginning Mm. if someone will be receptive to you being more open to whatever you have to say to them mm. as you said before there will be signs that mm, he's not he or she is not quite ready yeah. to hear what i've got to say to them um so um listen uh, to that yeah listen yeah. to that and i think also you have to tread carefully with vulnerability a bit because i don't think you can be too vulnerable per se so vulnerability is a good thing and i don't think it's like mm. saying can you communicate too much no but you can be too vulnerable in the sense that you can start to use your partner like a therapist which can be problematic if they they're not mm. equipped to mm. deal with that level of emotion or hurt yeah. or pain yeah. or issue right there's a way that a therapist will help you navigate through an issue that a partner won't necessarily be able to if they're not trained so i think you need to strike a balance between being open and honest and telling your partner everything about how you feel, but they're not expecting them to kind of always be able to walk you through it and give you the solution at the end of it. Mm, so being, true. being able to like understand that you can be vulnerable, you can be open, but then sometimes it's a case of being like, yeah, but I know that this is something that I really need to explore further. Like if you can afford it, go to a therapist and talk about it mm. in detail. And then you can come back and share with your partner what you're learning and how you're growing, which is also really helpful. Yeah. If you don't have a therapist, I mean, you can always speak to your GP. There are referrals that can be made off the NHS. And so, you know, don't always think that if you don't have the money, you can't get the help you need on certain issues because we've all gone through loads of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everyone's gone through something difficult in life. And there are things that affect the way we are. And I think some things need deeper exploration mm. with a professional. And I think sometimes that is a way of saying, okay, yeah, you can be too vulnerable, although I don't think you really can, but you can be too much on a partner yeah. if you place too, yeah, much too much of that like pain or hurt on them, yeah. which they don't know how to, to deal, deal with, with because yeah. it's not really about yeah. them, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. It's not really about the two of you. It goes beyond that. So that's kind of a weird answer because it's a yes, you can be, and no, you can't in a way. Um, so even on the yes, you can be like, if they don't deserve it, if they haven't earned it, definitely. But that should then be a sign for you to exit that relationship. Because if you can't be yourself and they can't take vulnerability in the right way, then that relationship is very, very questionable, mm. you know? Yeah, that's true. So in saying that, some people might ask, well, how do you know when not to be vulnerable in a relationship? And I guess, that's where you need to think about things like the, their maturity, maturity level yeah. that we mentioned. Yeah. Um, you, when they keep using information against you, when you told them not to. Yeah. 
Yeah, you might have to reevaluate um mm. the relationship. Yeah. At that point. At that point, yeah. Mm. Narcissistic personalities. Yeah, is one, narcissistic I would say. personalities. So and that's a weird one because narcissism is one of those words that's like a buzzword these days and it's thrown around yeah, a lot. But yeah. um, a narcissist, if you think of it, will be someone that's over controlling. Mm. They try to control you. They gaslight you all the time, which is another one of those terms. But gaslight is basically tell you that what you're feeling is not true or like deny your feelings or mm. deny your emotions. So mm. basically someone trying to kind of make you doubt yourself and question what you know to be true. So, I mean, you can look up narcissistic personalities, but if you're yeah. in a relationship with a narcissist, there's normally an array of things like that, controlling you, trying to keep you separate from other people, someone like that you don't want to be vulnerable around because they will definitely use it against you and they will use it to manipulate you. So what some people probably nowadays call toxic relationships, <laughs> if you're in a toxic mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. yeah, don't be vulnerable, just figure out a way to get out. Um, when they tease you about it as a form of weakness, I think yeah. I mentioned this earlier, yeah. you know, the phrase, don't take my kindness for weakness yeah. is a real phrase yeah, and, it, is. and it, it stems from people probably taking your vulnerability or your kindness as a form of weakness. And they think that because you are able to be vulnerable, that you're not able to stand up for, me, for yourself and know when someone is, you know, treating you badly. So yeah, if, if you find that they keep seeing your vulnerability as something that's weakness, then yeah. they're not even ready for that level of a relationship. You know, mm. don't even bother being vulnerable with that person. Just exit stage left. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So I also wanted us to touch on why men historically and typically struggle with vulnerability so much in relationships. I mean, we can't deny that most of the times in a relationship, a woman is more likely to be vulnerable than a man. And why is that? And we'll throw that question over to <laughs> you, the man in this conversation. Yeah, um, I believe as a man, hmm. we struggle with vulnerability because growing up, we are taught to be strong. Yeah. We're taught to be the protector of the family. There is no room to be vulnerable. There's no room to be what you mm. call a softy. There's no a room softie. to there's no room to Not be a softy. There's no room to be expressive. Yeah. You know, you just kinda get on with it, you know. You're almost not allowed to express how you feel. It is yeah. seen as a weakness. Yeah. And there's also a fear that shows a weakness to your partner, mm. like being vulnerable. Some guys will not express how they feel because they will come across to their partner or to a female as a a, yeah, so it's not a, just as that. a sweet guy. It's not just that. Oh, I'm not a sweet guy. Leave the sweet guy. So it's not just about the social conditioning to be strong, but it's also the social conditioning that women have had. You've had. So yeah. you, you worry about that as well. That yeah. the woman can then see you as weak, even yeah. if you don't see it yeah. as weak. Yeah, That's yeah, fear, fear of being uh, of being um, judged or rejected. Yeah. Is, is definitely strong. Yeah. And the fear of rejection amongst us as human beings is so natural. Natural, yeah. You know, we try to avoid rejection all the time. Yeah. Because there's a pain in rejection. Yeah, there um, is. But I guess we don't realise that sometimes you can't even move forward without some form of rejection. Mm. And it's better to be rejected and know where you stand than to have never kind of tried. And there's like a big question mark. Yeah. I guess that's where yeah. they're saying better to have loved and lost than lost. to have not I loved agree. all come I agree. I agree. Also, I think we struggle with vulnerability due to lack of communication. Mm, I think the communication we yeah, skills. Yeah, skills. I think okay. we don't communicate enough with our partners. Mm. We're not very good at, I would not say all men are not good at communication, but we do have to practice communication in relationships. So um, I think that has a big impact. As we were saying earlier on, if you go on a date with a woman and you like that woman, express how you feel, communicate how your feelings to her, be more expressive. I mm. think, you know, as men, we lack that. Yeah. How do how have you dealt with that? Because you've been married for a long time. You've been in a relationship for a long time. How have you kind of dealt with the social aspect of vulnerability? Of how to learn the hard way. I mean, we've um, had several arguments in our relationship where, you know, you've mm. told me to communicate a bit more. You've expressed the lack of communication, mm. you know, you know, is, is important in our relationship. And 
it took me a while to understand that it took me a while to accept that mm. but i guess it's a case of practicing communication but i'm curious more. so if it took you as a man a while to understand the importance of communication what what was a relationship to you then what did you think a relationship would be because that that could help a lot of younger men or men in a relationship right now yeah, but thinking that same way my, my understanding was I knew communicate when you're in a relationship, but I did not understand how much of, of it forms a relationship. Mm, okay, yeah. It makes up quite a big chunk of a relationship. Yeah. Constantly communicating with your partner. So how did you tackle the kind of social side of it? For me, the way I felt about you was important. It came into play. Mm. Um, you expressed how important communication is. For me, I had to put that whole feeling aside in terms of, you know, if you express yourself, you know, you're seen as weak. If you love someone, you will drop your guard. Yeah. You'll be willing to um, be able to put that aside because you feel a certain way for this person. So mm. you can ex you can be more expressive. You'll go the length to actually express yourself a bit more. And um, it kind of goes back to what you said in, I think it was last week's episode where you were talking about when you're in a relationship, you're in a bubble. Mm -hmm. And it's the two of you in that bubble, and you yeah. can make that bubble whatever it needs to be, to be yes, for the two yes, of you. Yes, so yes. you can make sure that it's like you're surrounded and kind of enshrined in love, exactly, and trust, yes, and openness. You can really be yourself, exactly, mm. exactly. And that, and for me, that was key to me, and it allowed me to be myself. It allowed me to express, to be more expressive. Mm. Um, I would say before I met you, I was never that expressive. Mm. Um, I was always a quiet person, but when we got together, I, I had to learn to be a bit more expressive. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. And a lot of people would still describe you as a quiet person. Yeah, right? still, I'm still quiet, but mm. if I feel a certain way, I'm, even till today, I'm still practicing expressing myself when I'm upset with you. Oh. No, no, sorry. <laughs> and I hope. No, I have the. Like, <laughs> no, no, it's yeah, a case you of, do. Yeah, you, do you just, the, yeah, yeah, like, I still that like. That hasn't been with me. Still have to take a deep breath and say, Nuria, <laughs> I did not like that. Did you understand? It takes practice. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you, yes, you know, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be able to say, look. Yeah, because you I, always used to say to me, like, oh, I don't, when I'd be like, why don't you just tell me that you didn't like what I did, as opposed to being upset and not really saying what you're upset about? You'll be like, yeah, I don't want to seem like a wimp, like I'm complaining, like I'm whining. Yeah. And I'm like, what? But you I don't, don't know. think silent I don't know. treatment Guys, and... I don't know if, you know, men out there feel us, feel the same way But sometimes when we, mm. if you do something wrong Me saying you do, you do something wrong feels like I'm moaning it Feels like I'm complaining, because, even if that's what it is And it I feels bet like, it's because you recognise that it's being vulnerable y Yeah, you recognize yeah that I don't that, like something that you've done Yeah, you recognise that, that you to you've been that. hurt Yeah, 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 it's the whole like, you know, being strong Mm. You know, not being in touch with your feelings. Exactly. It goes back, yeah. It's, it's like you've it's done this, lengthy. but it's okay. I'm just going to blank you. I'm just going to blank you. I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah, I don't give a shit what, <laughs> you know, what you've done to me or what. No, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, so, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's counterproductive crazy. You have because to... the person can end up doing it over and exactly. over again because they don't exactly. know what they're doing. You're, you must have to undo it. You must have to unlearn that type of behavior when you're in a relationship. Mm. Um, yeah. So, in your opinion, how can men be more vulnerable in a relationship then? If you were speaking specifically to men, what would you say are your tips for men on um, being more vulnerable in a relationship? Yeah, I would say um, be open and be honest. Yeah. Like not just being honest with yourself, but be honest to your with your partner. Listen to your partner's feelings and concerns because mm. that would ease the process. That would um, That would demonstrate to your partner that you care yeah um that you're supportive um, that you understand what they're going through and so they'll be more receptive they'll be more to receptive you. to you yeah exactly yeah, exactly like yeah. um don't live life according to stereotypes mm. um, that's really important find a, a partner you feel safe to be vulnerable around yeah because you said that from a female perspective you know find a guy that you can be yourself with i think from a man's perspective find a woman that would allow you to be yourself that would allow you to be able to express yourself and yeah. be comfortable 
Yeah. And don't let masculinity restrict you. Yes. Like you said, like letting go of that kind of the typical definition of masculinity. Yeah. Or what socially people expect of you as a man. Don't let that restrict you in any way because you are more than just masculine. Mm. Like I've said in previous episodes, everyone has masculine and feminine energy within them. It's natural. We're, we're literally built that way. And so when you're in tune with your emotional side or when you're thinking about how you feel, or when you're even like wishing for things like, you know, maybe you're wishing for a new job or you're activating that yeah, feminine side yeah, of you, you are. because you're, it's not just about action and doing, it's about reflecting and it's about planning and it's, it's, it's a different vibe. Yeah. So don't let masculinity restrict you because you're more than just masculinity. Yeah. You're more than just the man. You're mm. also who you are yeah. as a person. Yeah. Within. Yeah. Also, this is going to sound cheesy. Tell your partner you love them. No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because I, I, I think, because we're talking about ease and vulnerability in relationships mm. and marriage. Tell your partner you love her more often. Mm. That way they can, they can be vulnerable around you. If you want to get your partner in that vulnerable state, <laughs> why do you want to get your partner in a vulnerable no, state? Because it's needed because weirdo no i'm joking okay if I'm you want joking. if you want to get your partner if you want to get your partner to that state where they can be vulnerable yeah i know what you mean <laughs> express how you feel yeah more often yeah to them. and that helps you as well it helps because you because you're always you're tapping into that tapping. vulnerable and, side and they yourself. would understand that you are being vulnerable just yeah. by expressing that mm, so true yeah that's why the men don't like to say i love you because they don't want to activate that vulnerability but it's y'all are it, crazy. It's it, <laughs> it's 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 really healthy to say that. I think it triggers specific emotions in the brain mm. you know, of a man it's to say I love you. Come on. And now. to say it more frequently as well. Um yeah. it, it's it's probably one of the biggest vulnerability you know, vulnerable position you can put a guy in. Mm. I would say. That's what's up. And I guess stick to the tips that we already mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, so just to recap on the tips that we mentioned earlier on how to be more vulnerable and how to remain more vulnerable in a relationship. Practice getting out of your comfort zone. So mm. think about sitting by yourself sometimes, spending quality time with yourself, listening mm -hmm. to yourself, being really honest with yourself. Develop your Listener listening skills. skills through regular check-ins with yourself, regular check-ins with your partner. And communication skills as and well. And communication skills. Develop those communication skills. Make sure you're speaking. Like Frank said, tell your partner you love them. Mm -hmm. Be more open in that way. Practice compassion and empathy in every aspect of your life, yeah. not just a relationship. If you can be more empathetic towards people, more, more compassionate towards people, then you're going to be able to be more compassionate towards your partner and more empathetic towards your partner. And then don't forget to kind of turn that inwards as well. You know, be more compassionate towards yourself, be more understanding towards yourself, because that's that will help you to kind of um, exude that yeah. towards your partner yeah. as well absolutely no games whatsoever the cardinal rule to me in a relationship is no games and that will help you to be and stay vulnerable in a relationship every time you think of yourself playing games stop reset you know and and go back to being authentic be mm. yourself mm. and always view it as a strength mm. not a weakness. weakness definitely yeah don't you know, don't think of it as a weakness. It takes strength to risk being hurt. Yeah. Only weaker people are the ones that are afraid of being hurt so much that they actually don't even take the risk. That's true. You have to be a strong person to endure that there's a potential that you could be hurt yeah. and to kind of push through that to the other side because you know how great it can be if you're not hurt, mm. right? And like we said as well, start from the beginning, start small, and start slow yeah so those kind of that kind those kind of basic things about the way to actually approach it but those are the tips in terms of remaining vulnerable and becoming more vulnerable in the relationship hopefully you found that helpful so we're going to touch on the dilemma that we mentioned last week because yeah. it was all about vulnerability mm -hmm. and if our listener has been listening to this episode, which I assume they have, they've probably heard the answer to their questions answered in lots of different ways. But we're going to go through the questions that she actually asked us um, and just kind of point out the parts of what we said that answer that question. Yeah. So just to recap, the email said, 
Hey, Nuri and Frank, I absolutely love the podcast so far. As a woman of a particular age, it is so refreshing being able to take in some mature content closer to the types of conversations I have with my friends on love and relationships. I have a dilemma or a request for your advice. I have recently started to date a guy and for the first time ever, I have been approaching getting to know him from a place of vulnerability. No games, no holding back, just straight from the heart. He's being open too, but I feel as if he's slightly more guarded or measured than I am in sharing his feelings about me, although it is clear he feels a connection too. My problem is, how much is too much information to share with someone you've just started dating? I do feel comfortable sharing and being open, but a part of me thinks knowledge is power. The more someone knows about your insecurities, thoughts and feelings, the more they have the potential to use it to manipulate you. Secondly, being too open with your growing feelings for a man could scare him off if done too early. I'd love to know both your views on this. Keep up the great content, your number one follower. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we just want to say thank you for being our first ever dilemma. And there's not always going to be a dilemma segment because we might not always get dilemmas. We hope to. But thank you for reaching out and actually listening to us. It means so much to us. Mm -hmm. And we're glad that you trust us with your issue and you want our advice. So the questions that you asked us are, firstly, how much is too much information to share with someone you've just started dating? Firstly, vulnerability has to be earned. Yeah. Yeah. Start slow, start slow and small. Start small. Start off with something that is not that big. And yeah. naturally, I think naturally you're going to feel your way through it. Whenever you feel like it's something has happened where it's a natural time for you to reveal something else mm. about yourself, mm. reveal it. Yeah. Um. So only really share if it feels like the right time Darn, naturally. Yeah. Yeah. But there's not too much information. I don't think you can share too much information. It just needs to be in the right time. And it needs to be something that comes up because you authentically you feel, feel like, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you um, will know, you will, you yourself will know. Yeah. I've, I'm comfortable enough to share this information with this person. Absolutely, not, yeah. yeah. Don't think too much about how they're going to react to it because then that's you using what they might feel yes, yes, as yes. a way of stopping yeah. yourself from being authentic. Yeah. Just yeah, go out there and say it, yeah. you know, and use their reaction, their actual reaction, not what you think they will react, how mm, they think you mm. think they will react, but use their actual reaction to then gauge if they've earned a bit more vulnerability from you. And if they haven't, then hold back a little bit and then be a bit more vulnerable as, as you develop in your relationship a bit more. Um, mm. But use how they behave, their actual behavior to judge when is the next time to naturally release a bit more information about yourself. Um, and sometimes, like I said, this can be very quick and very early. It doesn't have to be months down the line. It could be mm. days, it could yeah. be hours. It yeah. really depends on what's happening naturally in that relationship. The second thing, Um, which is like a question, you mentioned him being more guarded and measured when sharing information with you. Mm. Um, And this made me think about what we've just spoken about, men and vulnerability. And so... um, He may may not be comfortable sharing mm. at this point in time. Um, Yeah. um, It doesn't mean he doesn't feel it. Yeah. But like Frank was saying, men take a little bit more More time time, Yeah. So be exercise some patience with him. Mm. Um, let him know let him know that as you just said you know be more expressive mm. when he's ready he would express himself yeah yeah and let him know it's a safe place yeah. for him to yeah. like he can trust you can build trust that you. trust yeah and like i said before don't use that as a measuring cup for your level of vulnerability mm. otherwise it loses it, its does. it does it does yeah so just because yeah. he's being a bit more guarded doesn't mean that yeah. you shouldn't you should share be, how yeah. you're feeling when you're feeling yeah. it you know, just yeah. um, make sure he's not using it in a malicious that's way because no. that's different than being more guarded yeah. because him being more guarded could be a sign that he's not sure he can trust you. And that could be because he's been hurt before. Maybe he's been at this stage with before. someone before mm. where he thought it was perfect. It was He could be vulnerable and he was and then he was hurt. So sometimes it's not about you. It's about what they've been through and it's about kind of making sure that they know that they can trust you, mm-hmm. you know? The other thing you mentioned was knowledge is power and sharing too much leaves room for that information to be used to manipulate you. 
Yeah. And to that, I would say, you know, if you, you, you know you, you're being manipulated mm. and the sooner you get that out in that conversation, in that early relationship, mm. the, the better it will be. Because if he's using your vulnerability to manipulate you yeah. or trying to, to use that, then he's not the right person for you. Exactly. Yeah. And most of us can tell when we're being manipulated. Yeah. yeah. So if you feel like you're being manipulated, hold off. Gather a bit more evidence. <laughs> like, yeah. like, do you think he is being like that? And then I would actually, I would just call him out on it. I would actually say like, oh, I think, I feel like you're using some of the stuff that I've told you. Some people don't even expect you to call them out on things yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, and like I was saying earlier about being with a narcissist, call them out on it. Say, yeah. I think you're being like this, which is traits of a narcissist. Mm. Like, is this you? <laughs> you know, hold the mirror up to yeah. them. So if you think yeah. he's being manipulative, and I'm not saying you think he is, but the way to tackle that is not then say, well, I'm not going to be vulnerable because my information could be used to manipulate me. No, it's to keep an eye out for that because you know what that feels like. And so when you do feel that, call them out on it and say, are you using things that I've told you to just manipulate me? Because that makes you very untrustworthy. Mm. And in doing so, you are, you are being truth to yourself mm -hmm. yeah, being yeah. To truth yourself. and yeah. you're setting a boundary yeah you you're are. making it clear you that are. you won't be played with you are. Yeah. yeah and lastly you said being too open about your growing feelings for a man can scare him off i'll let frank take yeah that. not the not the right man it wouldn't mm. i think if you if you express how you feel and you, you're you're giving more information about how you're feeling to him mm. if he's the right man for you and he feels the same way he will come forward and he will mm. he would step up and he would express himself yeah yeah and if he's not then you would know yeah yeah so in a way it's win-win it's win-win for you yeah <laughs> so yeah. being too open about your growing feelings yeah it can scare a man off but it will only scare off the wrong man the wrong and, man. That's and right. technically you want to scare off the wrong man <laughs> yeah so that should be a sign actually but yeah so i think we've covered all your points Thank you for your dilemma. I hope that answers it for you. Um, but yeah, if you have any other dilemmas in the future, definitely feel free to email us on itt.thepodcast at gmail.com. Or like we've said before, you can always DM us on Instagram at ittpodcast or one word. And I think that wraps up yeah. our conversation Thank about you. vulnerability. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, a good, that's a good one. So that's it guys, you've heard what we think about the importance of vulnerability in a relationship and we've talked about what it is and why you need it in a relationship, if you can ever be too vulnerable in a relationship, how to approach it and we've given you some tips on ways to become and remain more vulnerable in your relationships. We appreciate everyone that takes the time to listen to our podcast and we're super grateful for all your engagement with us. We really hope you tune into the next episode where we'll be talking about why you need to set boundaries, standards and expectations in a relationship and exactly how to go about doing it. So definitely tune in next week for that one. And don't forget to email us any of your questions, comments or dilemmas at itt.thepodcast at gmail.com or send us a DM on Instagram at ITT podcast or one word. Thank you for hanging out with us and we'll speak to you on the next one. Bye. Bye.